Hello and welcome to the video. This is the V2 version of the GEPRC CineLog 30. Now I've looked at pretty much all the CineLogs from GEPRC at some point over the past year or two and I really like them. They're a fantastic way to get that cinematic style footage while having the props enclosed so if you bounce or hit something you don't destroy it and also snap loads of props as well. Now the 30 size, which is what this is, is a little bit bigger, but actually I really like it. Although it won't fit in your pocket like some of the very small ones do, this will provide some decent amount of flight time because of the slightly larger props and the better efficiency. But you've also got room for a little action camera and things here as well. And whereas the smaller things like the 25 and the 20 struggle sometimes to have those extra capabilities, this is actually a pretty fab all-rounder. Now this V2 has a couple of changes, so let me cover those before we get too much further. The first change is that the main protective frame here has been redesigned and crucially they've added a shock absorber for the O3 camera here at the front. It's a nice loose one which is great because the camera is nice and lightweight. We've also got some vibration isolating at the top for the optional action camera mount that you can see here too. There's also done a bit of a spray coating process on the carbon fiber plate. Can I really see any difference? No, not really. And they've also moved the flight controller USB port to the rear. So it's here at the back underneath this particular connection. And that is great. It means that it's super, super easy to plug in. I initially didn't spot that. It took me a moment to find it. And plugging it into the computer to change your settings is an absolute piece of cake. The other change is, is that some of the stuff that has been 3D printed in the past is now injection molded plastic. So the camera mount and the T-type antenna mount are both now molded plastic. So let me quickly recap what the CineLog 30 is, and specifically this CineLog 30 V2 that's just been released. Again, this is kind of a three inch FPV drone designed for that cinematic and recreational use. It has those protected props which means it can be flown in close proximity to stuff without those things getting hit by the props and damaged. Inside is an all-in-one Taker F722 45 amp 32-bit all-in-one flight controller and ESC stack. Out on the edges there are 1404 3850kV motors running HQ prop DT 76 millimeter props and the Synlog V2 offers about eight or more minutes of flight time. However, as I said, with the battery that I'm using here, which is a bit heavier than they recommend, 850 milliamps, I'm getting almost 12 minutes. Now, just to give you an idea, you can absolutely get this under 250 grams if you go for one of the lighter batteries. It weighs about 183 grams without a battery with the L3A unit and everything inside. With my battery here that I'm using, and that's a Lava 850 100C pack, that's taking up to 179 grams. And because of that larger size, as I've said, this is kind of great for things like naked GoPros, Action 2, Insta360 cameras. Those are perfect things to put on the front of something like this. It has got enough power to fly with those kind of extra weights in the nose. So while I unbox this, let me go through the specs. Again, this is the Synalog 30 V2. This is one that comes with the O3A unit installed. Historically, when I've got these things in, they haven't shipped with the O3A unit. And I think that's something that DJI did, stopped bind and fly, ready to fly manufacturers shipping them with the units installed. But maybe because the unit is now end of life, they've changed their view on that or just changed their policy. The frame is the GEP CL30 V2. Carbon plate thickness on this thing is 2.5 millimeters. Wheelbase is 124 millimeters. The flight system is the Taker F722 45 amp 32 bit all in one flight controller and ESC. 16 meg of flash memory. ESC is a 32 bit 45 amp. The motors again are Speedix 2 1404 3850kV unit and the propellers are HQ prop DT 76 millimeters times three. That's also the V2 of those as well. Battery connector on here. Let me mention this. If I forget it, I always get asked. This is a little XT60 connector and as you can see, it's going to come with the O3 Air unit installed. The packaging on this, and I'll talk about it in a little while again, is really 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 good it's starting to feel like unboxing a nice mobile phone rather than a quad and historically GEPRC have always made really nice quad 
not so I'm a fan of the Gephardt C stuff but this is starting to be taken to a new level multiple receiver options with this you can either have the PMP which has a digital built-in receiver via the L3A unit if you want that you can have it with Express LRS 2.4 gig which is what I've got here or a TBS nano receiver if you're flying crossfire Recommended battery for this is 4S, um, LIHV ideally, 660 to 720 milliamp hours with that XT30 connector. But again, I'm flying it with a slightly heavier battery than that, which is an 850 milliamp hour lava pack, and it's handling it absolutely fine. They advertise the flight time on this between six and eight and a half minutes. And I'm getting much more than that, but then I'm using that slightly larger battery. Plugging it into the computer to have a look at the beta flight settings. Obviously going to use the USB port at the back. Again, really nice addition in this V2. Makes it super simple to plug into your computer to change the settings. I'm not going to go through this in great detail. I'm not sure how many of you are actually interested in this part of these reviews. However, I will put a link to the dump and diff below. If you're interested, you can go and have a look. But one of the things that it, they talk about is the fact that the tune and setup has been optimized by the people at GEP RC and having flown this I can attest to how nicely it's set up out the box it really suits that smooth cinematic flying style other nice tip here is that the receiver is powered by the USB connection so you can easily get into it put things like your binding phrase on it if it's Express LRS which is what I did here or if it's just powered by the USB you can wait for 60 seconds for it to time out and then connect to it over Wi-Fi and do your configuration so no need to plug the battery in without it being all bound up so what is it like to fly well surprise surprise it flies really well these guys are putting a lot of time and effort into making sure that these things fly spectacularly and there are no little jerks or jumps or anything that i would worry about when you plug it in there is the user one mode which allows you to turn the leds on and off i'm flying them with them turned on for this and I thought it would be fun to try and do some line of sight flying, but also capture the FPV footage too, so you can kind of see what it looks like when you're looking at the thing flying around, but also how good the O3 unit's working as well. Now, surprise, surprise, the image from the O3 unit is as good as ever. The O3 unit does provide a really, really pretty image out into the goggles. And when you're flying line of sight, if those LEDs are on, they're very easy to see. Now, I'm flying on a reasonably low light overcast day here and you can see the lights but not when they get further away however when you're flying in darker and dust conditions they become incredibly useful and they're also very handy if you're trying to find the thing if it lands in long grass you can't see it or you fly it into a hedge and you're not sure where it's gone in you do have the option to have kind of buzzer and beeper but being able to have the thing light up like a christmas tree really helps you track it down hover throttle is about a third throttle Flight time, as I said, I'm only taking about 13% out of my battery in the two minute flight that you've just looked at. So I'm getting well over 10 minutes, even with spirited flying. Smoothness is excellent with a default setup and perfect for cinematic style exploration and video. And I can't see any jello in the video image that I've got here. So in summary, uh, this is an updated version of the Cinelog 30, which was a really nice quad to begin with. Those improvements have definitely made it better. I like the excellent packaging that it came in. I do like the way that all the different things were included. Spare props are nice, all the cables, even a little thing to use to press in the bind button on the DJI O3 Air unit. All these things speak to how well thought out this package is. I personally like the LEDs in the prop guard. I like the way they're configured with the user one mode so you can turn them on and off. So as you're flying around in the daytime, you don't need to waste that power. But in the evening, you can turn that stuff on and have everybody around thinking that the aliens have landed. Quality of the build and the setup is excellent as well. Gep RC have been doing this a long time. This is absolutely what I'd expect from them now. And the vibration isolation for the L3 camera and the action camera too are really good additions. I also am a fan of the side saddle battery mount. This has this kind of sticky pad on the top and I've been flying it without a strap over the top. It fits really well, the battery fits really safely to it and in all the flying that I've done here it hasn't come loose at all. It does mean that you're going to have to protect that sticky surface 
on this pad if you're not using it so i maybe cut the lid off a plastic container that you're going to throw in the bin after getting some food out of it and just pop it on the top just to stop it from getting messed up and i do like the fact that because of that side title arrangement it can handle this little larger battery that i wanted to fly it with here in terms of things to be aware of well not a lot really um just remember the usb for the flight controller is actually on its butt so do remember that so you that's where you're going to have to plug it in i didn't spot that having had the previous version and not noticing that they had improved that particular part of the design and also maybe think about adding a gps on this that's the only thing for me that's missing here when you have something like an o3a unit in a model like this it gets expensive very quickly and i wouldn't want this flying out my life being able to have gps coordinates would also help find it if I was unlucky enough to lose it in the grass or fly it into a hedge or something and wasn't sure where it disappeared to. So in summary, a very fun to fly compact Cinewoop style model built around the DJI O3 Air unit that's been improved in a couple of key ways. What I'm hoping out of this is that hopefully GEPRC have realised that making models like this that aren't just built around one HD system is potentially limiting your market. And now with the issues around the end of lifing of the L3, maybe they'll think about making these in the future with a more universal mount for everything, including analog, HD0, Walksnail, DJI version 1, O3 and O4 air units. So that regardless of what you want to fly, you can fly one of these great little quads. I've been impressed with the improvements they've made on this frame. It is probably one of my favourite in this particular class, not only because it's so fun to fly, but it'll fly for a half-decent amount of time too. This is just fun. Recommended. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.